Holy Flowers is one of my most hated vegetables. Why? Oh. A few minutes later. If Holy Flowers cold like this every time, I would not mind one bit. Hi, my name is Leonard and this is Thought Process. It's a video series where I walk through with you some of my favorite home cooked dishes. And today we're going to work with cauliflower. Specifically, we're going to do a Malaysian style roasted char grilled cauliflower. Now, over the years, I've been going out to several restaurants and trying out many variations of this dish. And it's a dish that you can find at the lower budget end all the way to the higher end at fine dining restaurants as well. The beautiful thing about char grilling vegetables is the fact that you can take a very ordinary, normal vegetable and you can elevate it to a status whereby it's so delicious to eat and you can imbue it with a lot of flavours of your choice. Now in the case of my char grilled cauliflower recipe, I'm doing a Malaysian style which uses spices that kind of get inspired from both Indian and Malay cuisine. It's also utilizing a lot of souring agents like lime and tamarind and I assure you, um, this is one of my favourite recipes of all time and it's one that I often go back over and over again, whether it's for myself or for my guests. So to get started on the recipe, it's quite straightforward. The first thing we're gonna do is toast some spices. Now I start off with some star anise. You probably would just wanna use, you know, about two little pricks. If pricks are right word, I'm not sure, but two little nonkers of star anise. Now I follow that up with some other spices, namely in this case a cardamom pot. Now you can throw in the entire cardamom pot but what I like to do and what I did over here was to tear it open and just add in the seeds within the cardamom pot itself. The outer husk doesn't really impart much flavour and I really want um, the flavour to go through. So for half a cloy flour, I'm just adding two nonkers of star anise and one cardamom pot. Follow that up with one pinch of fennel seed and another pinch of cumin seed. Now I'm going to toast these spices over low to medium heat until I can smell them and once they are fragrant and aromatic, I'm going to take them out and transfer them to a bowl to cool them down. Now into the same pot with the residual heat, I'm going to add in my ground spices, namely in the form of ground chilli, dried chilli, ground coriander and also ground turmeric, approximately about one teaspoon each. Once they're fragrant and aromatic as well, I'm going to set that aside. Now into the pesto and mortar, I'm going to ground my spices. If you have a spice grinder, by all means go ahead. For small amounts such as this, I think using a pesto and mortar makes a bit more sense and grind them as much as you can, as fine as you can to a powder and you follow that up with some fresh onion and also fresh chilies. Now I am already using dried chilies. I'm using fresh chilies here as well because they do lend a very nice fruity note which I personally enjoy. You don't have to do this if you don't like it. I'm going to pound that up until I get somewhat of a paste and I'm gonna follow that in with shrimp paste. We call that balachan here in Malaysia. Uh, I'm using a dried version, but you can also use the wet version as well. About half a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon is good enough. They are really, really salty, and this is going to be the main salt agent in my recipe. Now, once that's moved into a paste, I'm gonna transfer that out into a bowl where I'm gonna add in my ground toasted spices, about half of the curry powder I made using the turmeric chili and the ground coriander. I'm also going to add in about a tablespoon's worth of garlic ginger paste. Um, I have some lying around but you can also ground up two cloves of garlic and also about 15 to 20 grams of ginger. Now following that, I'm also going to add in a heaping tablespoon of tamarind paste. You can use the conventional tamarind pulp and then squeeze that out uh, to get the well, extract in question, but I prefer using the pre-processed version. It's a bit more convenient for the home cook. And I'm also going to add in some extra virgin olive oil. You can use any vegetable oil. I'm just using extra virgin olive oil for health and also convenience purposes as well. Now mix that up and set that aside while you prepare your cauliflower. Now I'm using only half a head of cauliflower. You can scale this out to a head. Multiple heads of cauliflower. Heads everywhere. Go and give head. Now to prep your cauliflower, you know, I'm using a relatively old cauliflower here. If you have really great cauliflower, the preparation is really simple. Uh, but basically, what I often do is I trim around the stalks and get them to fall apart naturally. This creates the least amount of mess when preparing cauliflower. And if they are too big, all I do is I just slice them in the middle from the stalk 
and I just peel them apart naturally and again this causes the least amount of wastage now mix all the cauliflower into the bowl with the curry paste and get them really well mixed now at this stage you can leave them to marinate overnight if you want to I often don't do this at home um, I just cook them straight so onto a tray, I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to arrange them quite fairly spaced apart. The idea here is you want heat to really circulate through each every single cauliflower florette and you really want them to char really nicely. Now one thing to note is you can definitely do a whole head or half a head of cauliflower and just roast it entirely but by doing it in florets, it happens much faster and for home style cooking, faster, cleaner is the way to go. Now into a 180 degrees Celsius oven on convection, it goes for 8 minutes just to soften up the entire cauliflower florets. And once that's done, I'm going to pump the heat at the broiler setting, which means that only the upper element. And I'm going to cook that at 250 degrees Celsius or max temperature for anywhere between 3 to 4 minutes, keeping a close eye to ensure it doesn't get overburnt. Now once that is done, I'm going to pull that out and let it cool just slightly. And as I plate them into a bowl, Again, a bit fancy here, but I like to plate it back in a way that it looks like half cauliflower once again. I'm going to garnish this with some lime zest, which adds a touch of very strong fragrance to the dish. Some julienne chilies, which I put in ice cold water. Totally optional, but well, aesthetic. And I'm going to just squeeze some lime juice before garnishing it with some leftover curry powder we made. And there you have it. It's a really simple cauliflower recipe, but it's extremely delicious and I've not met a single person that have hated this dish ever. Now, in the case of home style cooking, you can obviously change up the flavors. I'm using a Malaysian style. You can do simple things like, you know, Indian rubs, Indian spices. You could also do Thai style, whereby you have tom yum paste instead of the Malaysian style curry paste. That also works. You want to go French, by all means, add some cheese with a bit of a Mornay sauce. That also works fantastically as well. Now I hope you enjoyed the recipe today. If you did enjoy it, do consider giving it a like. And if you have a dish in mind, whether Malaysian or not, that you'd like me to showcase how to do, uh, let me know in the comment sections below. I'd love to check them out. And if you like content like this and want to watch more, please consider giving this a subscribe because this channel, um, we are planning to make much more content like this on a regular basis. And I'll see you next time. Ciao! I think I don't like my bone girl texture. But by trying it, it's really real crunchy texture. And I like this texture a lot, a lot actually. And well, for the, for the rock, I see that it's very nice. Huh? But I, I like the sourness a lot. <coughs> the spiciness is just nice.